Hello there, everyone. Hope you're doing wonderfully today. Today, I thought it would be really fun to talk about something that I find fascinating about space. Technically, they're neutron stars, but pulsars. And magnetars. So pulsars and magnetars are something called neutron stars. So neutron stars are the densest object astronomers can observe. It condenses over half a billion times the Earth's mass into like a 12 mile radius. Um, and so that's extremely dense. Neutron stars are formed when a massive star runs out of, like, fuel. And it collapses. When it collapses, it crushes. That was weird. The collapse, the process is it crushes every proton and neutron into an electron. So everything just gets crushed together. If the core of the collapsing star is in between one and three solar masses, which is like a measurement, there's a chance that the star can be saved and it will turn into a neutron star. The protons and neutrons actually converting, being crushed into electrons is the thing that will actually like save the core. Um, but if it's outside of this range, or it's larger than that, um, this star could turn into a black hole. So what's left behind is this neutron star, an incredibly dense object that is about as dense, it's about like the size of our sun, like the energy mass. So a neutron star has the mass of the sun, but it's squished down into like the size of like a, a city. There's something called stellar remnants. What's this marker? And these can stretch for about 12 and a half miles into space. So one sugar cube, one sugar cube of neutron star material would weigh about one billion tons. So this is about the weight of like a mountain. They say, compare it to like the weight of what a mountain would weigh, which is like a lot. So this is like a beam that comes out. The planet rotates and the beam will rotate with it, kind of like a lighthouse. These neutron stars can exist by themselves like a regular star in like a solar system, or they can exist in binary systems with another star, which we found out is actually like more common than we expected. Pulsars and magnetars are considered non-quiet neutron stars. P 
pulsars. These are most neutron stars that are observed by astronomers. Pulsars are rotating neutron stars. that tend to have pulses of radiation coming out in kind of even intervals. So usually that can typically range from milliseconds to seconds in between um, pulses of radiation. So pulsars have very strong magnetic fields and they have like funnels that kind of jet, jettison, kind of like that. And it's just like um, radiation and materials, like just literally like blasting out from this neutron star. These are very, very powerful beams of light. Even though this is constantly shining, you can only see the light when it's pointed exactly in your direction, which is really, really fascinating. There are clouds of charged particles that move along these, what they call like field lines. So, I don't know if I said this in the beginning, but neutron stars are composed almost entirely of neutrons. That's why they call it a neutron star. Makes a lot of sense, right? So I just wanted to make sure that that was in there. Pulsars, they have a magnetic pull and they also have a rotational pull. So the rotation and magnetic poles are not the same. So it can cause a, a pulsar to kind of like swing wildly around and kind of like shoot the beams all different directions. These, the rotate, the magnetic poles are actually not the thing. It's like the rotation, the, ro the poles of rotation that actually swing the beams of light around in like a very like consistent and uh, even way. So the rate of rotation can range from like 11.8 seconds. So that's like one rotation to rotating about 642 times per second. Space is so crazy. So pulsars also experience something called glitches. And this is when the speed of rotation slows down rapidly or speeds up suddenly. And they think that this might have to do with something called star quakes. Star quakes or sudden cracks in the rigid iron crust of the star. So it just suddenly cracks, kind of like, you know, I mean, that happens when like buildings age, like cement ages, even like hot and cold together can crack something. Um, so a star quake will rapidly speed up or slow down the rotation of the pulsar. This can also be because of the difference between the like liquid inside and the like crust layer that's going on inside of the star. So the interior is like more fluid and the crust is not. So that can create um, glitches in the rotation of the pulsar. So a lot of pulsars, they call it like the, the crab star, is in the center of like the crab nebula and that pulsar is slowing down so the radiation is starting to kind of like spread out through the like space around it which is creating like this the crab nebula which i think is 
that makes a lot of sense. I actually didn't know that, like that that can create a nebula, nebula. and it's just, I'm just so tickled right now. So next we're going to talk about magnetars. Magnetars are considered superheroes of the star world. This is because the colossal magnetic field strength that magnetars hold has absolutely baffled astronomers and scientists for a long time because it's just like unfathomable. A magnetar is well over a trillion times more magnetic than the sun or the earth. While pulsars, they've discovered about 2,000 of those at least, magnetars, there's only been discovered about a dozen, and that's it. They're a very special breed of neutron star because of their obviously large magnetic um, strength. So one theory suggests that magnetars are endowed with this incredible magnetic ability during the birth of the neutron star. So it could have something to do with the rotation, the speed of rotation of the star at that time. So part of the science behind this is that the magnetic field of a neutron star or like a pulsar is connected to the crust of the star. So when something happens to the crust, um, it can cause a lot of like, like an explosion of radiation and that gets carried through the magnetic field and into like the, the like gamma, like the rays. So there's a magnetar that they know about that one burst took one tenth of a second and it released more energy than the sun has emitted in over a hundred thousand years in just one burst. They don't know a ton about magnetars um, just because they're, they're, there's only like 12. They do believe that possibly a lot of pulsars that they're seeing could have been magnetars but they're just in like the slower stages of kind of like the ends of their lives. So that's all I have for you today about neutron stars, pulsars, and magnetars. I feel like there's more information out there, but it gets pretty complicated after a while and there's not a ton of information on magnetars that just like an average person can understand. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to give you the basics and get your mind going. And if you feel like you want to look up more information, then that's very exciting. So I hope you have a great night or day and I'll see you in the next video.